Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman David. It is that time again on One Football. It's time for the daily news. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new to One Football and like that goddamn video. Anyway, on today's show, we're going to be talking about tapping up. Of course, Marco Silva's move to Everton. We're going to be discussing Saul Niguez, another defender that rejected Manchester United. And to finish things off, we had a bit of Juan Mata glory. You Juan, Juan, Juan. It's you Juan, Juan. Anyway, let's get this party started. First up, let's talk about Everton, Watford, Marco Silva, and a little bit of tapping up. Tapping up in football is when a club approaches a player or a coach without the permission of the other club that currently owns that player. Of course, Everton doing that with Marco Silva last autumn. Everton sacking Ronald Koeman and looking to replace him with, of course, the Portuguese tactician. They didn't go through the correct methods, they didn't speak to Watford, they didn't get permission to talk to Marco Silva, doing all the naughty stuff. What could happen, of course, to Everton is they could get a points deduction and they'll get a hefty fine. Farad Mashiri and, of course, a number of the Everton board need to submit some documents and some phone records to an individual board that's going to be looking into the situation. If they, of course, are found, it will be, as I mentioned before, a lot of money and a few points potentially deducted. The last time this happened in English football, of course, was when Ashley Cole signed for Chelsea. Chelsea illegally approached Ashley Cole, Mourinho got fined, Ashley Cole got fined, Chelsea got fined £300,000 and were deducted uh, three future points if they were to do it again. That's something that we could see with Everton. Watford are really angry about the situation because they felt that it derailed their season. Uh, Marco Silva eventually getting sacked around January after winning one game in 11. Um, and they felt that they were pushed into a situation where they were fighting relegation. Naughty stuff there if you're ever going to buy someone. Get a bid accepted first. Anyway, let's move on to the second little bit of news today, and that is about Saul Niguez and Barcelona. So Saul Niguez uh, obviously plays for Atletico Madrid, a fantastic central midfielder, arguably can do absolutely everything. Pretty complete in terms of he can shoot, he can tackle, he can win the ball back, he can carry it. Think the goal that he scored against Bayern Munich in the Champions League a few seasons ago. Wow, what a talent. But Barcelona have a first refusal. A first refusal in football, for example, in this case, is if another club, let's say Manchester United, come in and bid for Saul Niguez. If the bid gets accepted, Barcelona will have that similar bid accepted by Atletico Madrid and will be able to speak to Saul Niguez and offer him a contract. Imagine the midfield though, maybe Sergi Busquets sitting uh, and then maybe Messi partnering Saul Niguez in midfield, that could happen. But Saul did sign a new nine-year deal last season, taking him to around 2023 with Atletico Madrid at the ripe age of 31. Don't expect this move to go through, but of course if someone gets a bit accepted by Atletico, Barca could be the guys coming in and stealing that transfer. But interesting stuff there, a fine midfielder who's won more tackles than any other player in La Liga since the start of last season. 145. Five tackles won, winning 67% of his tackles and of course averaging around 5.5 per game. That's why we're talking about completeness. Saul Niguez, what a midfielder. Let's move on to another defender that rejected Manchester United in the summer. This time, Lucas Hernandez. Is there any defender in European football that hasn't rejected United? Get into the comments. I don't know. I think everyone, Benucci, Ramos, Piquet, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. Anyway, Lucas Hernandez has a release uh, clause at Atletico Madrid of around £71 million. Pounds. Man United got a bid accepted uh, over the summer. Of course, if you bid that money, you get that sort of, you know, the chance to talk to the guy. No tapping up involved there. United were set to double his wages. Lucas Hernandez rejected the deal, saying he wants to stay at Atletico Madrid. For me, that's a good decision for Lucas Hernandez. Atletico really building a quality side this season. And fullbacks vitally important in Diego Simeone's side. The 4-4-2 does move to a 4-2-2-2. When they have possession, the wide players move inside to become interiors, and the fullbacks get really high and provide that width. We saw over the World Cup that Lucas Hernandez has got a bit of quality in the final third, something that you wouldn't expect for a player that's usually a centre half. Uh, you know, in terms of what he did, no player in the World Cup got more assists than Lucas Hernandez. We've got a video on the One Football channel coming out today, the top young players to check out in the Champions League. So make sure you go and get over there and check that one out as well, because we're talking about Lucas Hernandez, uh, of course, left back. But Man United getting rejected by another centre back. What a surprise. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. We've got Luke Shaw and Diogo Dalot to play at fullback at the moment. That is exciting, exciting times ahead. Anyway, guys, let's finish things off with a bit of Juan Mata love. Juan Mata, a beautiful man, a beautiful person, and got an award in Spain for just doing the good deed. Juan Mata set up a charity, Common Goal, that basically means that players commit a certain percentage of their wage to good stuff, you know, good deeds, good little things around the world. Juan Mata getting an award in Spain, basically it's like the, the sports awards out there. Juan Mata, deserved winner of that award, of course, the greatest midfielder in the Premier League. Juan 
keep doing all the good stuff that you're doing. Anyway, guys, I've been Statman Dave. This has been the One Football Daily Show. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new, like the video, and comment below. What's your favourite one matter moment of all time? See ya.